Assemble with Care is a short and experimental fix-it-up game from developer Us2 Games. Initially an Apple Arcade premiere, now turned Big Boy Steam release. So is it good enough to be more than just a mobile game? I don't know. Let's find out. Assemble with Care places you in the shoes of Maria, who makes her living restoring people's broken stuff. Around a year ago, she left her parents' workshop to travel around the world, meeting new people while paying her way by picking up any job she can in the cities she visits. The game finds her in the city of Bella Riva for the summer, where she meets a small cast of characters. They start to mend what's broken in their own lives as Maria rebuilds their stuff. And it's really a bit on the nose for my taste, especially since the game's so short, coming in only an hour and a half. I thought it was also a bit strange that initially the game gives you this feeling of wonderlust, sort of making you expect that you're going to be meeting a large, colorful cast within the city, but instead it feels weirdly claustrophobic with every job coming from one of the same four people. They all have their own relationships that have fallen apart for whatever reason, and then with every job you take you get some dialogue before and after explaining why whatever item you're storing has significance to the characters. But because of the length they have to go for some really low hanging fruit to force an emotional response, just like estranged sisters who used to be best friends, or a little girl with a workaholic dad, and a super dead mom. It's my mom, she, she's not here anymore. Now I really like the idea of the items you're fixing having a history and a meaning behind them, and I think it could have led to some really amazing and emotional moments just like the developers clearly wanted, but unfortunately with the way the game's structured and paced, it ends up making them feel really rushed and a lot of the emotional moments just fall a little flat. And that's not to say that none of it works. Like I really like the first time you meet Izzy and she wants you to fix her tape player, and then once it starts playing again you hear a woman singing and find out that it's her mom who died and this is the only way she can ever hear her voice again. Leave us sit by your side and hold you so tight. It just instantly adds weight to your actions and made me feel really curious to see what other stories Bellariva had to show me. But then next you meet Izzy's dad, who's also the mayor of the town, and the endless possibilities just kind of start to shrink away. After that you meet Carmen, who's the owner of a struggling cafe. She's also the sister of Helena, who's a tough businesswoman that sort of financially supports her in the cafe. But after so many years she seems to have lost all faith in Carmen and her ability to run a successful business. And those are the only two story threads in the entire game. So for the next hour you pretty much just go from place to place meeting one of these four, while they talk to you before having you fix what I have to assume are horcruxes, since at the end of each job they come out the other end with a brand new perspective on the world and a healthier soul. You brought me this. I knew then this was a different kind of magic. Very dark, very powerful. But until tonight I had no idea just how powerful. Like, yeah dude, your daughter wants to spend time with her only non dunzo parent. If you didn't already know that or care enough to make a change, then I feel like I can safely say that you're a freaking butthole. My daughter comes first. Until she gets bored of a stuffy old dad anyway. You're not wrong, you're just an asshole! And just putting some new gears in your watch isn't gonna change that. I mean it feels like Marie should just open up her own therapy practice without effortlessly she washed away years of emotional problems. And I know that's the premise of the entire game, but personally I just would have enjoyed the story a lot better if we had more glimpse into the life of a stranger type moments, like with the tape player, and less unrealistic character arcs. And I don't want to be too hard on an indie developer for not having endless content in their game, but this did come from a rather large developer who created the hugely successful Monument Valley, and according to their wiki they have around 260 employees. And sure, they aren't all devs, maybe not everyone was working on the symbol with care, but to me it feels like the game could have been so much better if the scale was expanded a little, because as it is now it feels more like a polished mobile game than a full-fledged title. So moving on to the gameplay. The campaign is comprised of 14 objects which you'll interact with in some way, although two of them are tutorial-like suitcases that you'll unpack at the start of the summer in Bellariva and then put back together at the end of the game. So it's more like 12 actual levels, although 4 or 5 after the first are still so easy because they're trying to introduce the new mechanics slowly enough for you to learn them, that by the time the game starts to give you interesting puzzles, it's already mostly over. So the basic idea is that when you start restoring something, you get the broken item along with any tool or replacements you need to fix it. And luckily Maria always comes prepared with the exact right things, even if she couldn't have possibly known what to bring. It's almost like she has intimate knowledge of the future and makes me think these four people are going to be very important sometime down the line, but before that the most boring arts and craft version of Kyle Reese was sent back, to make sure they got where they need to be by fixing their stank old junk. Listen and understand. Did you hear about the camera? It's about time. And I think what's a bit lame is that by showing you all the items you'll be using to fix something, it takes a lot of the mystery away. You don't have to think for yourself for even one second when you open something up and just have to look for the exact part that's sitting on the ground right next to you. You can just ignore everything else and go straight for ripping it out and chunking the new one in. I don't think it would have been better to have a bunch of junk lying around you aren't going to use, but I think there are only two levels in the entire game that have items you actually need to test out, and one of them wasn't even originally in the base game. And it's not to say there isn't anything else to enjoy, because one thing that always worked really well was the first time pulling apart any item. 
There's just something so satisfying about unscrewing and then removing a covering to find the inner workings of an item. It's the kind of thing that I loved doing when I was younger, when I'd pull apart my calculator to see what was going on on the inside. But unfortunately, as a dumb dummy, I didn't know how to actually fix anything back then, so I ended up with an elephant graveyard of sorts under my bed from all my experiments. But the point is, there's just something that feels so right when you look beneath the surface and discover what's making something tick. Now, Assemble with Care is much more surface level than that though, because you never have to have any sort of intimate understanding of any of these objects to fix them. Mostly, once you get the items open, you'll instantly see the issue with certain parts being clearly busted up. And again, if you weren't 100% sure what needs replacing, just take a quick glance around at the stuff you brought. After that, it's your job to unscrew the proper things and place in the new items before reassembling it all. And speaking of that, I think I spent more time messing about with screws than doing anything else in this game. It didn't really bother me at first, but then you just have to keep doing it. And also, please learn from my mistake and never screw anything back until you're sure you're done with it. Just like with this projector, I was so unwaveringly confident in my abilities that I tightened everything back up inside and out only to find that I'd cucked myself somewhere along the way. And it wasn't until the third time that I learned my lesson and stopped screwing things in until the very end. And maybe that's some obvious advice, but sometimes in the high stakes adrenaline pumping world of restoration, your brain can go to straight poo when working a job. And speaking of dumps, there's a super frustrating control problem with inspecting items. So to rotate them, you have to actually put your mouse just outside the object, and your cursor will visually change to show you that you can rotate it. But what ends up happening is you actually move the cursor too far and then click, which causes Maria to set down any object she's holding, and then pick up whatever might be under your mouse. Sometimes she even just decides to put stuff down for no reason if you click on it in the wrong way. It doesn't ruin the experience by any means, but it was annoying, and I wish they would have added a key that you could push to rotate on click, just like any 3D viewing software since the start of time. Even still though, I've gotta say as the levels become more complex, they end up becoming much more enjoyable. There are even some levels where you have to access different areas of an object and rotate the item throughout to get a better view of what's going on. And eventually the game comes together in an epilogue where you're fixing a coffee machine, which ends up being the most interesting and complex item. Although it made me feel there might have been a better game fixing industrial machinery for emotionally broken factory workers. I just wish we would have gotten more of this caliber of puzzle throughout the game, because that's really what ends up making or breaking something like this. I wouldn't say I didn't enjoy what was on offer, but I just had the feeling that it could have been a lot more well-rounded instead of you being able to blow through the first half and then only have to break the lightest of sweats right before the credits roll. One thing I did really love about this game is its visual aesthetic. It's got so much style in this really cool pastel color palette which makes every level really nice to look at. The game seems to take place sometime in the mid to late 90s, so a lot of the items you'll be fixing are kind of old school. And as someone who grew up in that era, I found it really charming. There's also this really great shader, or maybe it's a post-processing effect, that makes every texture look almost like a painting in motion. It's just a lot of fun and really helps in giving you the happy, hopeful feeling that this game is trying to evoke in you. And when you aren't looking at broken antiques, this hand-painted feeling is still carried over with all the dialogue being accompanied by little paintings of the characters or settings. The only issue is that some of the character art gets reused throughout the entire game. Like there's usually only one sprite for any character motion, so get used to their sad stare off into the distance look, because you're going to be seeing it a lot. Also it really isn't an issue, but some of these eye close ups were a little too personal for my taste. Like this back to back close up of Maria and Izzy's dad makes it seem like they're staring into each other's souls, and it was really giving me some serious smang vibes. Smash and bang is my favorite combination. And aside from that, the UI just looks really clean. It's super modern with no wasted space for anything, and it's really the only time where its mobile roots are actually a positive thing. I'll say I think it's really impressive how cohesive every aspect of the visuals in this game are and how well the developers have realized their artistic vision. And it even extends to the sound engineering as well. So the background music throughout the game is really great with every item having its own music and none of these are really tracks I'd listen to outside the game, but they fit the mood and the themes of each level so well that I don't think they really need to do anything more than that. And the whole game's also fully voice acted with everyone giving pretty good performances, although Maria I think is the clear standout. Before I left, I knew there was something of my own I needed to fix. And at the same time, Izzy walks the finest of lines between an alright child's voice and this incredibly annoying Oliver Twist accent. I put on a stupid dress, and I don't want to. Maybe it's just a Bella Riva thing, but no one else sounds like that. Even her dad, who instead sounds like a really tired and sad Liam Neeson. Sorry, I'm a little tired. But I think the best thing about the audio are all these contextual sounds that play for any of your actions. Whether you're picking up an object or messing around with a screw or just removing a casing, it all sounds really satisfying and makes it all the more enjoyable. So overall, I think Assemble with Care has some great ideas and is able to execute some of them really well actually. Like the visuals and audio are both extremely well done and make for a really unique experience, but unfortunately it's held back by its rushed story and some frequent frustrations in the core gameplay loop. I wouldn't say this is a bad game by any means, if this was a game I played on my phone instead, I probably would have been a lot more forgiving of some of the problems due to lowered expectations, and then this might have been a much more positive review. 
Although I'd probably say that if this kind of gameplay interests you at all, it's probably worth the six bucks. So for my final score, I'm gonna go ahead and give Assemble With Care one perfect cup of coffee. Mmm, a perfect coffee.